Welcome back to Hidden Reviews, and today I will be ranking Joaquin Phoenix's top 10 best performances. Now, Joaquin Phoenix, in my opinion, is one of the best actors ever, really. Like, I think he is phenomenal and consistently shows great performances over and over again. Now, because there will only be 10, and because he has shown so many great performances, I do have to give a few honorable mentions. We'd be here way too long if I had to share all of the honorable mentions, but just to name a few, his brand new film, Napoleon, is an honorable mention, Signs, Parenthood, and then To Die For. I'm only going to end off with those four as the honorable mentions before we get on into the list. Alrighty, without further ado, let's start out with number 10, Inherent Vice. Inherent Vice is a love or hate Paul Thomas Anderson film. See, Paul Thomas Anderson is a phenomenal director, and Inherent Vice is his only, like, uh, love or hate, very mixed reactions type of film. I, I think it was okay, but... And the acting was good, but Joaquin Phoenix definitely shined over everyone else in the film, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, everyone was great. Everyone was, but Joaquin Phoenix had a very humorous performance that is also very memorable. And number nine, another film that came out this year. I, I honestly was thinking Napoleon was going to make this list, but... This time, Bo is Afraid makes the top 10. I thought he was just fantastic in this. It, it's so weird. Again, people will dislike Bo is Afraid. There's no question about that. People will dislike it, but I thought it was a fun movie that is morbid and insane and long. It's three hours long, but... Even then, the film is definitely carried by Joaquin Phoenix's very versatile performance and is necessary, necessarily like just leaning on him the entire film. Number eight, Two Lovers. One of his most underrated performances, in my opinion, and it's so subtle that most, that some people that love his bigger performances like when he's screaming and everything, they might not enjoy it as much, but I love his subtlety in Two Lovers. And in my opinion, I think Joaquin Phoenix is one of the best subtle actors ever. Two Lovers is the first of many subtle performances on this list. I honestly think there's like four major subtle performances on this list. And... Two Lovers is the first one, and it, it was so good. It really is. And we'll get in to see how great Joaquin Phoenix is at subtlety later on. Uh, now this is where things get hard. 7, 6, and 5 are all pretty much interchangeable for me. Like, I spent the longest time definitely on those three. And I know if I put one of them at number 7, people are going to get mad, but... You know what? Let's do it at number seven, Walk the Line. This, he was fantastic as Johnny Cash. There's no question about that. The film is great, and Reese Witherspoon is fantastic in it as well, but Joaquin Phoenix does a, a phenomenal job as Johnny Cash. Uh, and I know a lot of people say he should have won the Oscar. I would say, um, Go watch who actually won and tell me Joaquin Phoenix should have won the Oscar. As you're one of my nitpicks with people won the Oscars is how they say, oh, this person should have won without actually watching, you know, what won. Like, if you tell me Joaquin Phoenix should have beat Philip Seymour Hoffman, please, please explain in full depth how. But, and even then, Heath Ledger and Broke Back Mountain was another huge obstacle. But, excluding my rant on the Oscars, Joaquin Phoenix did a fantastic job as Johnny Cash, and I would say that's a, that's a really good 
start into Joaquin Phoenix's filmography if you haven't started. Alrighty, number six. You were never really here. This is a very unknown Joaquin Phoenix film, and it is very dark and depressing, and I love it for that reason. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix does a this is another one of the subtle performances. He does not scream. Yes, he acts with his eyes on the level of like Al Pacino in this film, and it is just so great. And then I feel like I'm about to repeat myself, but number six, Joaquin. Number no, no, no. uh, Number six, come on, come on. Now, uh. So you know how I said you were never really here was morbid and depressing in that way. Come on, come on is like loving and depressing in a different way. I think it's just a hair more complex and a hair more in depth than you were never really here. That's like otherwise they are like super close in terms of acting. If you like to explain how they're not, go ahead, but I think his performance in Come On, Come On is absolutely phenomenal, and should be an essential watch. And if I haven't said this already, every single performance on here is, in my opinion, Oscar tier, like they're all award worthy, but I genuinely think, because he has four Oscar nominations right now. The chances of him getting nominated to Bo is Afraid is, at this point, really low, even though he totally should get a nomination, or at least be in consideration for a nomination. Uh, but, like, I thought he was great in Inherent Vice, though that was a tough year, with easily that was a tough year. Two Lovers, again, very tough year. And then, You Were Never Really Here, again, but... Still, come on, come on, I think he definitely should have gotten a nomination for it. He, that year, he totally should have gotten a nomination for it. That was the year Will Smith won for King Richard. And then there was Benedict Cumberbatch in The Power of the Dog, Denzel Washington in The Tragedy of Macbeth, Andrew Garfield in uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, and then uh, Javier Bardem in Being the Ricardos. In my opinion, Joaquin Phoenix was for sure better than at least two of those performances. Maybe three. Maybe four. Maybe five. But you know, look, I, I'm an Oscar defender, but I can't defend that lineup. I'm not, it's not that the lineup is bad, it's just it could have used some work with what else would happen that year. All right, before number four, his first big one, Gladiator. And now I know this is a huge debate: who was better in Gladiator, Russell Crowe or Joaquin Phoenix? A lot of people say Russell Crowe. I personally say Joaquin Phoenix. I thought Joaquin Phoenix stole every scene he was in. He was he owned every single scene that should have been his first Oscar. Uh, I don't care what anyone says. Gladiator should have been his first Oscar. Benicio Del Toro was amazing in traffic, but... And Albert Finney was good in Aaron Brockovich, but... Look, Joaquin Phoenix gave one of the best performances of the year. In my opinion, top three best performances of that year. Only behind uh, Christian Bale in American Psycho. And Ellen Burstyn in Requiem for a Dream. Otherwise... Joaquin Phoenix was 100% up there. Alrighty, number three. Probably going to be the controversial pick for being this low. And I know everyone's going to say, why isn't this higher? Who knows, it could get higher after next year. But at this moment, number three, Joker. He is my second favorite live-action Joker in the time he budget. And I thought he was amazing. Otherwise, I think everything's been said. That was his first Oscar, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> Number two, her. 
Her is a fascinating film that deals with the issues of AI and dating. And it is, in my opinion, his best primary subtle performance. I know some people are, I know a lot of people are going to say my number one is a complete subtle performance, but I, uh, his loud moments are definitely there for number one, but on her. Her is a fantastic film and is a fascinating performance that I think should be an essential watch of the 2010s easily. And yeah, he didn't get an Oscar nomination for it, even though he totally should have. And I don't even know if he would have won. Because he was up he would have been up against Matthew McConaughey in Dallas Buyers Club and then Leonardo DiCaprio in the Wolf of Wall Street. And I know people debate that those two against each other all the time. But I think Joaquin Phoenix was easily up there. Easily up there with those three. Oh, those two. Alright, number one, the master. This, in my opinion, is one of the greatest performances in cinema. I know that's huge to say, but I don't care. Joaquin Phoenix and the Master gives the second best performance of the 2010s, in my opinion. And you know what's terrible? What is absolutely terrible? The best performance of the 2010s, in my opinion, I know people are going to hate me for saying this, was who he lost the Oscar to. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I love it in other years, but like, literally put Joaquin Phoenix in any other year of the decade, I think he would have clean sweep the Oscars, easily. But he had to be up against Daniel Day Lewis, of course, for Lincoln. Yeah, I know, there's so many other amazing performances up in the 2010s. J.K. Simmons in Whiplash, Natalie Portman in Black Swan, Olivia Coleman in The Favorite. Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler. I know. I know of all of these phenomenal performances, but I think Joaquin Phoenix and the Master is an absolute master class of acting, along with Phillips and Hoffman in that movie, but I think that is just a phenomenal performances performance, and I honestly think that could be top 20 best leading male acting performances in history. Alrighty, that is my list. If you want to see any other list, just please comment down below. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See y'all later.